my multi my multitasking <laughs> here you just gonna put the reflector under your chin and then shoot like this Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nicole. This week, I am so excited to give you another photography tips video. For those of you that don't know me, I have been a professional photographer for over 10 years. I'll have my website linked down below with my portfolio. And today I'm gonna cover a topic that has been highly requested by all of you. It's how to pose your models during a photo shoot. I'm so excited. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes of one of my photo shoots and show you exactly what I do with my clients and my models when we go out to to shoot. Okay, let's go. All right, we're here at the photo shoot. This is my beautiful model, Shay. She's an actress here in LA and she is killing the game. We've actually known each other for a really long time. Long time. Through... Since I was seven and I'm 13 now. And she so was it's like, been a while. She was this big when I first met her. We met at National American Miss and now she's all grown up. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big girl now. Taking her pictures. So we're gonna head over to the wall and do some more headshots. photo shoot with some headshots and headshot posing is really easy I do minimal movement so it's just little chin this way chin that way head to this way maybe a little shoulder angle just to get some different looks you don't have to do a ton of crazy movements when you're posing for something so close up like a headshot you really just want to focus on the minuscule like chin a little bit of tilt sometimes chin down one thing I do is chin out it feels really weird to the model, but it doesn't look weird and it can add a lot of shape to the photo. I brought my nifty uh, reflector with me. And this is really great because even when you're in the shade, it can bounce some of that really nice soft sunlight on and you can see that light that just like goes onto her face. It's so beautiful and it just brightens her eyes up in the photo. Don't be afraid to get on the ground. Literally sit, have your model sit on the ground, get on the ground with them because then you get a really cool perspective. It looks kind of crazy if they're sitting on the ground and you're way up above. I mean, sometimes that's, that's a look and a vibe, but I recommend like getting down with them. Tell them to sit how they normally sit. Do something natural and comfortable. I mean, look how cute this is. She's a pro. Another tip is to always encourage your models. I'm yes. notorious for being the photographer who's like, oh, yes, killing it, you look great, work it. Genuinely, because I mean it, like I love working with people who are just fun, like Shay, but it also helps your model feel more at ease, so don't be shy, encourage them, and give them little boosts of encouragement. <laughs> shooting with my Canon 5D Mark III. Right now I have the 50 millimeter 1.2 lens on it. I love this lens for portraits because it gets that really shallow depth of field and those creamy headshots. Now if you watched the video I made on best cameras for beginners, you'll know that I recently switched over from my Canon 5D Mark III to my Sony a7R III. I've been doing all my videos and photos on the Sony and I actually really love it. I never thought I'd say that because I've been shooting with Canon for over 10 years, but for this shoot, I will be using my Canon 5D Mark III because my dad will be filming and vlogging on the Sony. The two lenses I usually switch between are my 50 millimeter 1.2 prime lens and then this is the 24 to 70 2.8 lens. <laughs> One thing that's really fun to do when you're posing your models is to have them move. I'm all about the movement shots because it gets away from like the awful, awkward hands on my hips. I don't know what to do with my hands. Um, and it just helps them be more natural and have more fun. So I'm gonna show you one thing I love to do. Really easy, you just have your model walk towards the camera and walk away towards the camera and it's amazing. Movement is key. Something that can take your photo from a zero to a 10 is adding some movement. Most all of my post tips that I'm about to give you all have to do with moving your client around. Cutie, yes. And now I'm gonna have her do it where she's not looking at the camera. It's cool to do it both ways. Have them look at the camera once and then have them look away from the camera. So this time look away like you're seeing a friend or just happy on the streets. Ready, go. Yeah, one more time, one more time. My also, angles. I'm on the ground, man. Thank you! Yeah, thank you, so cute. Oh my gosh, I love that. So we talked about walking to and from the camera. Now we're gonna take it a little bit further. This time, Shay, I'm gonna have you pretend like you're walking on a line. So pick up, you can even pick a line that's on the sidewalk, but walk like you're on an imaginary tightrope, okay? okay? You can like use your hands to balance. See, we're gonna go all out with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Ready? Set, go. Yeah, pretend I'm not here, don't look at me. Yeah. If 
your model's been looking straight at the camera for a lot of photos, have them try looking off. That can also switch it up and give some variety. They don't always have to be looking straight on. They can tilt their head, they can look off in the distance, they can look down, they can look up. See how good she looks looking away? Twirling is one of my favorite prompts to give my models. It's so cute for girls and it also helps break the ice and get them more comfortable in front of the camera. Usually they end up laughing. I usually have them twirl maybe two or three times and on the third one, stop at the front and maybe sway back and forth and laugh and play with their hair. There's so many things you can do with twirling and with movement actions that will give you those beautiful, candid, fun, smiley pictures. Okay, I have no idea if this is gonna work, but it looks so cool and I'm really excited about it. The biggest thing when shooting is to make your clients feel at ease. Nothing's worse than when people feel awkward and you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, and they're uncomfortable because a lot of times they maybe have never had their picture taken before. Um, you as the photographer have to take control. I try to do my work ahead of time and get to know my clients as best as possible. And truthfully, I end up walking away as friends with these people because I've gotten to know them so well and they're awesome people. And so I recommend like if you don't know these people, reach out, have a phone call, go to coffee with them, get to know them and their lives and their stories so that when you're shooting, it's not as weird. If your client's uncomfortable, then your photos are going to be uncomfortable. So do your work ahead of time and get to know your clients and make them feel valued and loved. You want this whole experience from beginning and end to be really, really great for them. Depending on how you do it, this could end up being a really empowering experience for your client where they feel cherished and celebrated and end up with photos of themselves that they absolutely adore. You have that in your power as a photographer to provide that type of experience for your client if you take the necessary steps and do those things. We're at our last location for the shoot. The sun's just about to go down, but I forgot to mention my like best tip ever is to bring a little Bluetooth speaker and play music because it just sets the tone. It comforts your model, lets them have fun. I always ask them what their favorite kind of music is, and then I put it on so we can basically just have a dance party, and it's so much fun. Now when I'm working with a couple or doing an engagement shoot, that's a completely different situation and I could honestly make an entire video on how I pose my engagement shoots, but it's essentially the same thing. You want movement. It's actually easier because you have another person there so you can literally use the two people to your advantage to get them to do something. I always give them prompts and something to do. But with an engagement session, it's different because you've got two people there and they're in love usually, I mean it's an engagement session, but you can literally use the other person to your advantage and they can feed off of their energy as they do different actions and things that will give you amazing photos. For my couples, I love walking shots where they're walking away from the camera or they're running towards the camera. You can have one person give a piggyback ride to the other and have them give the other person the bounciest piggy ride of their life. You can have them whisper something into the other person's ear that's gonna make them laugh. You can always have a couple jokes on hand to make them laugh or you can be like me and just say something dumb and that usually makes them laugh too, that works. Have them twirl with each other. Have them spin around in circles. Have them dance. Oh, dancing's a really good one. Dance like children, roll in the sand. There are so many things you can do with a couple um, other than that awkward prom pose. We want to avoid that at all costs. Two of my favorite pose ideas that I got from my friend Evie, who's an amazing elopement destination wedding photographer, are the drunk walk, which sounds kind of crazy, but you basically have them walk towards the camera as if they were the drunkest they've been in their entire life. They're not actually drinking alcohol, but they're pretending and it's so fun to see them falling into each other and smiling and it usually ends up with great photos. And the Nicholas Sparks book cover where they are super, super close. The goal is to touch as much as possible and to be really close and intimate with each other um, as if they're almost going to kiss but they don't kiss but they're so close as if they're going to and there's rain falling down on their head just like a Nicholas Sparks book cover and then right at the last second they can kiss each other and it's the most beautiful, magical thing ever. But like I said before, if you've done your work ahead of time and you've gotten to know your your couple or you know your model, you will know um, how they like to be held, what their interests are. Knowing more about your client and being friends with them will help you so much when you're posing them and to just overall have a better shoot experience. I hope you found this helpful and gave you some inspiration on how to pose your model for your next photo shoot. If you have any other questions about photography or my photography business, would you let me know down in the comments below if this type of content is something you want to see more of. I am happy to share my advice and I want to help, so just let me know. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.